Hi everybody. Welcome to the Self Sewn Wardrobe Podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue, and this broadcast originally appeared as a live Facebook video in the Self Sewn Wardrobe Facebook group. So if you're interested in live videos and a very fun, kind, accepting, uh, low-key sewing community, go to facebook.com slash groups slash self sewn wardrobe and you can join. Uh, you can also, if you like the podcast and you like the videos, leave us a review on iTunes um, by searching for the podcast. Even if you're already subscribed to it, you have to go to the little search button there, search for self sewn wardrobe, click on it, and then leave a review. It will ask you to enter in your Apple ID and password. That's how you know you did it right if it took you some time and effort because it's not easy to leave reviews in iTunes. <laughs> and I think Apple does that on purpose. All right, so this morning I'm talking about tools for the ginger jeans. I've been meaning to do a series on this and sometimes I get a little bit of like writer's block or I don't know. Uh, sewing bloggers block and I uh, think I have to have everything perfectly you know photographed and explained and every everything perfect before I can like release a blog series but I'm realizing that with the help of all of the people in the group you guys are so encouraging and you give such great feedback that I sort of like to kind of uh, you know, do it as I go along here with you all and I really appreciate all of your feedback and questions and I'm actually going to bring up the self sewn wardrobe on my computer here because I got a few questions from the video yesterday that I would like to answer um, as we get going here. Uh, I'm going to say this at the beginning of the broadcast today, but we sell Cone Mills denim here in the store that is recommended for the ginger jeans. It is a high quality denim, it's a stretch denim, and we sell it uh, by the yard and by the half yard. So if you are, um, you know, looking for ginger jeans fabric, this is a great, you know, place to go if you can't find it locally. It's, it's kind of hard to find locally. Um, it's got about a 20% stretch. It's um, two to three percent spandex in there. And uh, I actually, if I reach over here real quick, this is all I have left at the moment and when I order it, it comes from South Carolina, it generally gets here in about five to seven days. Um, we normally carry three colors. We have a black, all right, it's a black denim that has uh, black threads going one way and white threads going another so it has this nice you can kind of see the grain of the twill. Here's the back of the black denim. You can see what I mean by there being also like white threads in it. So this is the other side of the fabric. So uh, we normally have black and then this color here, which Glenda ordered yesterday, is the high street denim and it's like a darker indigo color. Um, kind of, I don't know, oh, it's not navy, but it's a, it's a darker indigo. And then the third color that we carry that I actually out of stock on is the Cone Mills Indigo. And so the uh, I, I need to order more Cone Mills denim to get in the store. And I know a lot of you are interested in making jeans. So I'm going to make it so that you can order the fabric through our website even though my inventory is low. Because if you all are interested in getting it, I'd love to make sure and order it. Like if everybody's wanting black and I need to get 25 yards of black instead of 15 or something like that, I'd love to know that. So I have to buy them by the 15 yard bolt. So if I can know uh, what people are wanting uh, ahead of time, I can get that in and get it shipped out to you. And um, don't worry, you'll get some goodies. So Glenda, I'll fold up your denim nicely again, I promise. And Glenda took a, uh, advantage of the coupon code from yesterday and I'll put it in the comments for the video today on the Facebook group of a discount on the Zirkle pin cushion. And these are the pin cushions that have the really strong magnet in the center. So when you put the pins in, uh, all the points, if you put it point, you know, toward the center, they all stick there and then the balls are on the outside. And that's very nice. I also enjoy using these 
as pattern weights. Now, they're kind of costly pattern weights. You know, a pattern weight can be a tuna can. A pattern weight can be, you know, your phone. Um, <laughs> so you, you can have anything for a pattern weight, but I do want to, uh, uh, it's, it's a fun way to also store your pins. And so if you are using pins to mark anything on a pattern, it's kind of nice just to have, a, you know, your magnetic pin holder there and uh, use it as a pattern weight as well. They're really heavy, so they're, they're just very nice for that. Something I do like in a pattern weight is for it to be very heavy. So when people are like, I made, you know, fabric pattern weights, if you stuff them with the right stuff, they can be nice and weighty. But some of my other favorite pattern weights are they are these like, they're like rubberized metal sewing shapes or like heavy metal washers. I also like those uh, for pattern weights. So anyway, the Zirkle, it does lots of things and there's a 30% coupon available to members of the Self Sewn Wardrobe Facebook group. Okay, so today, after I get off of here, I hope to film a, a video um, uh, that shows you how to blend between pattern sizes on the, whoop, wrong way, on the ginger jeans uh, pattern that's hanging up behind me. And that is going to use some of the tools that I talk about today. This is the dressmaker's curve that I use in the Easy Tea class and that a lot of you have ordered or a lot of you already had and maybe didn't know what it was for and so you got a little taste of it with the Easy Tea class. The dressmaker's curve um, or the styling design ruler, whatever they want to call it, uh, it's useful in drafting patterns and in altering patterns. So it's a tool that you're going to have for a long time and it is, it's an acrylic ruler um, I think if you take good care of it and you don't drop it or anything like that, it won't break. It does have a little hole in it up here at the top and we hang ours on some like slat wall. We have like hooks. So we actually hang our ruler up uh, behind, you know, our ironing board and it's always there and we can't break it or step on it. It comes with a little instruction booklet that gives you even more details on it, but we have a YouTube video on how to use the dressmaker's curve. And then uh, today I hope to just do that sizing, blending uh, video because a lot of people are going to be between two different sizes on the ginger jeans, between their waist and their hips. And yesterday I discussed how to go about choosing your sizes. And a couple of people took the opportunity to email me or message me and that's fine. Uh, I know that in the rules of this group it says not to message people unless they ask you first. Well, I'm the admin, so any concerns you have or any um, issues, you can message me on Facebook, but you know, it gets pushed into that other folder a lot of the time. So emailing me is just a better way for me to actually like make sure that you know I get the message. And my email address is Mallory. M-A-L-L-O-R-Y at SoHere.com. Okay, so I'm just going to run through this shopping list real quick that I had printed up for here in my store. The Ginger Jeans pattern, you need that. Uh, if you like our videos and you want a paper pattern, I ask you humbly to order the paper pattern from us. I stock them. I'm just getting in a new shipment. It should be here any day now. Uh, and they will um, go out to the people who have ordered them. I understand if you want to get a PDF pattern, not a problem. But if you want the paper pattern and you don't have a local sewing store that carries it, consider purchasing the paper pattern from us. I'd very much appreciate that. Okay, so you're going to get the paper pattern. It's a multi size pattern. You are not going to cut your pattern out, okay? You're not going to cut the PDF out. You're going to leave it intact, all right? Working on a blog post right now about uh, tracing out patterns and why we do it. And the one thing I didn't bring over to this table is uh, our roll of tracing paper uh, that we sell. We sell a big, huge, long roll. of It's called medical tracing paper. You can use whatever kind of tracing paper you like, but if you're looking for some, it's uh, it's this stuff that I use in the Easy Tea class and that we um, use a lot. It's very transparent. It's easy to trace. It's easy to see when you're blending between sizes. Um, 
So I really like that tracing paper. I'm not a huge, I, I don't dislike gridded tracing paper, but I'm not a huge fan of it. But part of that is I have my grid uh, cutting table, so I understand if people do like the gridded tracing paper. Okay, so dressmaker's curve, the tracing paper, and then this is a big old chunky mechanical pencil. Of course you can trace your pattern using anything, but this pencil lead is gigantic and it's <laughs> it's great. Um, it's great for tracing out patterns and not ripping through your paper with a finer mechanical pencil lead. It's a 1.3 millimeter lead, so that's pretty, pretty chunky. As we go along here, and I list these things, the zircal, the dressmaker's curve, the tracing paper, the mechanical pencil, all of those things are actually included in our basic drafting kit, which is on sale right now from, uh, I think, $99 down to $74.95, so that's a big that's a big uh, difference. Okay, you need 2.5 yards of stretch denim. I really would recommend getting that amount. Um, when you, If you do the ginger jeans and you're a size 10 or smaller, you can technically get away with less fabric, but I'm just, I'm kinda doing a little cover in my butt statement here. If you get less than 2.5 yards, I can't guarantee that you're going to be able to get the jeans out, especially if you accidentally cut them out wrong. Um, uh, or if you accidentally need more waistband fabric or you need to recut something, okay? So two and a half yards of the Cone Mills denim. I have it on the site where I have the denim listed in one yard increments and a half yard increments, okay? So Glenda purchased two one yards and one half yard, and that was perfect. We cut two and a half yards, and we're gonna send it off to her. Okay, uh, then you also need top stitch thread. This is somewhat optional, but the traditional look of jeans is that you have a thick top stitching thread. We have some non-traditional colors here. Here's gray, here's white. I'm gonna put gray on my black denim. These are my black denim ginger jeans that I have cut out here. This is purple. We've got some golds as well uh, on the site. You'll see everything there, uh, and size 100 top stitch needle. So if you are going to use this top stitch thread, you absolutely must have a size 100 slash 16 top stitch needle that's going to handle the thickness of this thread. If you try to use something smaller, uh, you may have thread breakage or issues. The top stitch needle has a nice big eye, and this is what I've recommended for all of my students who've worn ginger jeans and taken ginger jeans class at my store. We I've taught about 12 people to make them um, here in the store along then I've made them myself and Becca's made hers etc etc so we're having a good time doing that um, and then construction thread so you need normal sewing construction thread high quality stuff I love this Mettler top stitch thread and I'm a huge fan of Mettler sewing thread as well so it's high quality polyester that won't rot uh, it'll stay nice and color fast for you. When you use top stitch thread in your needle, you will use regular thread in your bobbin. Okay, you don't put the top stitch thread in your bobbin. All right, and then I actually used a serger a lot with my ginger jeans. So I have on my little shopping list serger thread, but of course that's not absolutely necessary. And then I have a clapper on the list, and this is something that Heather recommends as well. This is a pressing tool for when you're pressing your jeans, okay, or when you're trying to get a nice crisp press on anything. When you heat fabric with your iron, you're relaxing the fibers and you're molding them into a shape and you're heating them up, right? So it's important not to move your fabric until it's cooled down, or at least not to, you know, if you iron fabric and then you throw it in a wad, that hot watered up fabric is gonna keep all those wrinkles, okay? So it's important to set a press with something that is like cooler, like room temperature. So if you press something over and then you put pressure on it with this clapper, this wooden um, kind of dry iron, cool iron, you can then set the press. You can also use the clapper to tamp down seams. 
Um, so a clapper, for those of you listening uh, through the podcast, it kind of looks like an anvil. It kind of has a handle on it, uh, but it's wooden. And mom and I talk about clappers in our pressing episode on the Sewing Out Loud podcast. I also have a hammer here. We don't have these in our online store, but you, of course, probably have one around the house. These are great for hammering down thicknesses on the jeans. Some seams do get pretty thick, especially if you have a machine that's maybe a little bit less sturdy, a little bit less durable. The hammer's gonna come in handy big time. Okay, I talked about pattern paper and the design ruler, and then I wanna talk about one of my favorite sewing marking tools. Uh, I've got two sewing marking tools here. One is a choco liner, a pen style choco liner. And a lot of you have seen these. Heather recommends this in her ebook. She recommends it uh, in on her blog, etc. These choco liners are like a chalk wheel, but they're shaped like a pen. So there is actually a wheel on the end of the pen, and it gives you a nice crisp line. So she recommends tracing out your pattern before you cut it out. And I don't do that with everything, but I do do it with the jeans at least for my first time, and I recommend my students trace out the pattern on their fabric, at least for the first time, because you can do it wrong. The pattern layout is a little complicated. You have to flip the legs back and forth in order to avoid twisting. She covers that in the pattern. And so I had one lady using um, this Hansi Ultimate Marking Pencil it is a waxy pencil. It's white. This whole thing is the pencil, so it can be sharpened down forever. And it is, it shows up so nicely on all of our denims, not only to outline the pattern and to mark notches, but I also like to, I call it writing myself love letters on my patterns. And you can see on my leg of my pants here that I have the two letters RF. Um, drawn out <laughs> and so the I, I like to mark all my pattern pieces I, I put you know RF RL uh, and then you know back or I like to do you know RB and LB for right back and left back on my jeans I like to do that for my students who are making them the first time I can tell what they are but there are some directions in the pattern where she's very specific about like you know, take the right leg of the pants and do this. And sometimes when things are turned inside out or they're turned right side out and they're facing you, they're mirror imaged. So you can write all sorts of things on your jeans with this marker. It is white, like I said, and the great thing about it is it stays so nicely until you iron it, okay? So that's the one thing is if you're going to be ironing something a lot and still needing to be able to see the marker, you have to keep that in mind. You might have to remark or maybe you need to mark that with something else. The chalk liner is great, but over time it can kind of brush off your fabric. And we all know there are tons of ways to mark fabric. Um, when you baste your jeans together, I don't really have anybody do any pressing. So you baste them, you take them apart to begin the construction process, and there's really no marks lost you know, in that in that process. The only reason you might have to mark is if you are re-cutting the pattern a little bit. So, um, and then you need a little bit of fabric for your pocket stays. And the other thing is, I know some people who have just started sewing, or maybe even people who've sewn for a long time, they have these very short straight pins, okay? The, and, I recommend long straight pins, especially for working with bulky fabrics in garment sewing. So the, these long ones are going to, if, if you just have itty bitty short straight pins at your house, make sure you've got something longer. I think these are like an inch and three quarters long and I would recommend those. I've had people have trouble when they're trying to use the itty bitty short straight pins on uh, the bulkier denim fabric. Okay, so those are materials that I recommend for the ginger jeans. Of course you need like a zipper and buttons and stuff like that. Oh, there is one, one more thing. On my second pair of ginger jeans that I made, I didn't use a jeans button, 
I get a little frustrated with the jeans buttons. I'm not super fond of them for lots of reasons, but I do love me some long prong snaps, okay? And <laughs> we sell these along with the snap setter and they go in, you use a hammer, okay? I got my hammer here. You use a hammer to put them in. They stay in so nicely. I mean, once you put a jeans button in, you're not moving it anyway. You know, I, of course there are ways to do that. You can cut it out and whatnot. But the snap is, you know, the same amount of permanence as the jeans button, but I think it looks a little nicer and I just, I love snaps. And I think it lays flatter underneath your clothing. So I'm a big fan of these long prong snaps instead of using a jeans button. Now people who've taken the class at my store, I gave them a zipper, a, a denim, you know, fly zipper and a jeans button for taking the class with me and that's what we used. No one who I've taught has wanted to do rivets, okay? <laughs> Only one person so far has wanted to do belt loops, okay? So there are there is some uh, flexibility in this pattern. You don't have to do everything that uh, Heather talks about, but I think it's really great that she does talk about all the traditional things that go on jeans in case someone's really trying to duplicate a pair of, you know, jeans that they might buy in the store that would have things like rivets and stuff on them. So check this out. And then, uh, like I said, the basic drafting kit that would help you with the easy T class and also with any other uh, pattern drafting or alteration that you are doing. It's on sale. It's 25% off. Um, it includes a, a bulky mechanical pencil, uh, that big uh, roll of tracing paper, the styling and design ruler. It actually includes some elastic and some ribbon for you easy tea people. Um, and it, oh, what else does it include? Um, <laughs> oh, it includes two black zircles to be used as pattern weights. So it, it includes those as well. And that's on sale right now for everybody. Um, the discount code for the purple zircle is available only to the followers of the self sewn wardrobe group and uh, so if you're wanting to get 30% off on that check out the code in the comments of the video today and we will uh, I will place that there okay I want to check out a couple of the questions that I got yesterday on the group from the video I did yesterday Do, do, do. Oh, somebody asked a really good question about a muslin, and now I can't find it. Well, Sierra asked a good question. I already cut out the waistband for my next gingers, but I've been uh, I've lost a lot of weight. Um, I think I'd benefit from a contoured waistband. Do you think it would work to chop the waistband in the center and then sew it back together together at an angle to create a curved waistband? I don't mind there being a visible seam. Yes. So keep in mind that if you are gonna kind of like redraft the waistband there might be a visible seam. The only thing, you've got to be careful with the waistband. You can't make it like too contoured. I mean, I guess if you put the seam in the back, that's fine. But keep in mind that if you take up the waistband, you may need to also take up the yoke of your pants. So I would, maybe if you've made your ginger jeans like the entire way, but you only have the waistband to put on, consider basting the waistband on and seeing if you want to make any alterations to that. Um, and I'm trying to find, someone else was talking about making a muslin uh, in the group and um, now I can't find it, but Sandy posted some pictures and she said, after watching the live video on fitting ginger jeans this morning, I pulled out my pair to reevaluate. I remeasured myself and finally understood the rise measurement. I think on my next pair, I need to shorten the rise. My current pair comes up quite a bit above my belly button at my natural waist. And then the waistband is loose. When it sits at my belly button, it fits better, but I have extra fabric at the crotch, I think. So what Sandy has, this visual, if you you know aren't in the group and you can't see it, if you are, thank you Sandy for posting these pictures. Um, she's got the first picture, the jeans, the waistband is sitting uh, up above her belly button and they look pretty smooth. Actually, they look like they fit quite nicely, but she doesn't like how high they are, so she wants to shorten that down 
also when Sandy pulls down these jeans a little bit and that waist measurement at the top gets pulled a little lower on her body, she thinks they fit better. So Sandy, if you shorten that rise, yes, that's exactly what you need to do. Okay, you're going to trace out your leg measurement and, uh, or excuse me, trace out your leg pattern. You're gonna slice it across that length and shorten line and you're going to shorten it a little bit. And you can measure that by just how much you scooted those pants down. What that does is it's going to preserve that measurement that you like up at the waistband of the jeans, but it's just gonna be a little lower. Some people are short-waisted, um, some people are long-waisted, and so this is something that you kind of learn. And your first pair, even though there's all these precautions and you can do lots of research, it's really great to just kind of dive in and make them. Um, if you do baste your jeans together and then you wanna like shorten the crotch rise, don't be afraid if you want to shorten something you're going to have the fabric to do that you can slice that pattern apart and shorten it and then you can lay that pattern piece back on the fabric you cut out and recut it so that's kind of the nice thing about basting together leaving your seam allowances etc so yes um sandy when you cinch that when you kind of push that waistband down a little bit and you like that fit there but you have a little extra fabric in the crotch because it's too long you can shorten that crotch, uh, that that rise a little bit. And I think an inch or uh, whatever, you know, however much shorter you cinch that down. Sharice asks, I've seen lots of different jeans other than the gingers um, by the same company. Why is everyone gaga over the gingers? Well, um, ginger jeans is by Closet Case Files. Um, that's Heather Lou. Her pattern sort of went viral in a way. Uh, lots of people were using it on Instagram. Lots of people felt encouraged by the community to just go and make jeans um, because so many people were doing it. But if you use any other pants pattern, I mean, a lot of this still applies. Of course, I don't know if every pattern will offer like the same you know measurements, like the same sizing that I talked about. I did get specific there, but. They're, the ginger jeans aren't necessarily like some magic thing that are gonna you know fit you right away um, so don't feel if you like have another pattern for stretch denim jeans it's not like the ginger jeans is the only one I do think it's a pattern that's pretty generous in the thigh area for most people and that's attractive to some people some people really like that um, I think that one reason that people to go crazy over the ginger jeans is just because the designer is a good communicator she's got great blogs um she it's a pretty blog she's fun to like look at and listen to and uh she she's a neat lady so um i don't want to say like only ever buy ginger jeans pattern but when when i teach a class um I've had, I've had people try to teach in the store before and tell people like, I'm gonna teach a skirt class. Everybody bring their own skirt pattern to class, you know? <laughs> That's just not a good idea. So we all, uh, you know, I was just like, okay, everybody, we're going for the ginger jeans. So if you wanna make jeans, here you go, you know? Uh, Fred says, uh-oh, I'll have to pay attention to the legs. So Fred, as many people know, is uh likes to classify herself as a piece of celery and she has very slim legs so yes fred uh if you find after you base them together that the legs are a little large on you that's one of the easiest places to take in um especially in the thigh area you're just gonna kind of like pinch that along the sides and uh, transfer your markings when i made my size 10 ginger jeans i made the straight 10 it was great and I walked around in them after I had them totally, totally finished. I'm talking hemmed, top stitched, everything. And I walked around in them for around three hours, I think, and there was a little bit of bagginess at the back of the leg. And I thought, well, I don't want them to be like too terribly tight. You know, I want to be able to move in them, etc. But over time, I just thought, you know what? I could stand to have these taken in a little bit. So on the side of the ginger jeans, like at the hip, there's a little bit of top stitching that goes down the leg. And I actually, all I had to do, I kind of pinched in the side of my jeans and I only had to re-seam 
my side seam and it was actually below that top stitching so I didn't have to take anything out. I liked the way they fit in the lower leg. It was just in that like thigh area. So it was kind of cool that uh, I didn't have to undo anything. And then for my next pair, as I've lost a little bit of weight, uh, I ended up going toward the size eight pair of ginger jeans. And I was like, okay, well, I wonder if these are going to fit me in the thigh better. And then they, they did just fine. So, um, yeah, I think that that kind of covers it for Ginger Jeans tools. And like I said, I'm going to do a little brief video on blending between sizes. There's a lot more information about the jeans, about how to make them, you know, in the pattern. And I'm not going to reproduce, like, you know, any information that is... Heather's intellectual property, um, you need to, you know, everything that I'm going to talk to you about, you know, you need to purchase the pattern in order to do. And I think it's important to be respectful of all of her hard work in creating this pattern. Uh, and anyway, if anybody has any other questions, let me know. Tomorrow I am going to cover the basting process. Um, I'm going to sew, I'm going to, I'm going to be really nice to all of you guys, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna base together this pair of jeans even though I know that they already fit me and I would go ahead and sew them together anyway <laughs> I'm gonna take an extra step I'm gonna base these together you're welcome okay uh, I'm gonna base these together to show you because I think uh, sometimes people get confused I think I do have kind of a nice tip for basting together the front of the jeans so that you know how to deal with the fly area and um, please let me know if you have any other questions and I'm really excited to continue this series with you all. If you're listening to this as a podcast, please feel free to leave us a review on iTunes and I will see you all tomorrow on Friday in the Self Sewn Wardrobe Facebook group for a discussion of basting ginger jeans. Have a lovely day everyone. <laughs>